I'm hosting an imperialism style battle royale with every team in the MLB playoffs, and there can only be one team left standing at the end of the video. I'll be spinning a wheel to see who attacks, and then this arrow will decide which direction they go. With so much land to cover, it may be a while until we get to see our first game, as we landed on the Arizona Diamondbacks and took the Northeast state of Colorado. However, the wheel then landed on the Miami Marlins, and we're going to get our first game of the video because they're completely trapped by the race. Miami was one of the biggest surprise teams of the playoffs this year, but they're going up against a stacked Tampa Bay team that has been to the playoffs four years in a row. The Rays were just eliminated in real life, and a big reason for that is because Wander Franco got into legal trouble, and he's only still on the team because I forgot to load in the live rosters. Regardless, the Rays were unable to score in their first inning, and the default rosters meant that Shane McClanahan was on the mound as Jazz got aboard with a single. Then with one aboard, I was definitely late on this fastball, but Solaire's power helped it carry over the fence and Miami broke the tie. Tampa Bay could be eliminated quicker than they were in real life, but Brandon Lowe smoked this single back up the middle. That was a good start with zero outs, and this single seemed to hang in the air forever before luckily dropping in for another hit. A walk loaded the bases, and that pitch was turned on and absolutely belted. What an answer from the Rays to take the lead. It's only game number one, and we're already getting out the rye bread and the mustard for Grand Salami time. The Rays had the lead, but definitely couldn't get too comfortable as the Marlins came right back with another dinger. This was already a high scoring game, but neither side could let off the gas. This time, it was the Rays who were looking to start a rally. I love Sandy Alcantara, but he was off his game, and the Rays had no problem extending their lead. However, the Marlins never quit, and this deep drive could tie the game, but it just wasn't deep enough. The Marlins' hopes were still alive, but weren't looking good as Wander Franco went yard in the fifth, and Jose Siri followed up in the sixth. Miami was a great story this season, but they won't be continuing it in this battle royale, and the Rays have taken over one of the biggest territories. Gaining new land means you're a bigger target for attack, and Arizona is really in danger of being wedged between California and Texas. On the other hand, the Braves are definitely the favorite to win this, and they've completely blocked Tampa Bay. They continue to expand westward to Houston and are definitely a huge threat here. The Orioles had one of the most exciting teams in the league this season, and they attacked the Philadelphia Phillies. This game was completely deadlocked at zero, but the Phillies were finally threatening after this deep double off the left field wall, and this one could easily come down to who scores the first run, and thankfully, this weak pop-up was just enough to score Castellanos. However, this could have just been the wake-up call Baltimore needed, and with runners at the corners in the fifth, this weak single tied the game. A rally could be really bad news for Philadelphia, and they kept finding holes in the defense to take the lead. There had not been a lot of offense in this game, with just three runs in eight innings, and the Phillies were definitely running out of time. However, with their backs against the wall, Brandon Marsh delivered the only home run of the game to take the lead. This game completely flipped in one swing, and now the Orioles were panicking. With just a one-run lead in the ninth, the Phillies wanted some insurance and pushed for one more rally. The best thing about imperialism is that anything can happen, as there's a deep drive into left by Castellanos, and that will make it a 4-2 ball game. Baltimore's offense never got going in this one, and the 100-win Orioles have become the first upset of this battle royale, and Philadelphia gained some new territory. Usually, you can't know which direction a team will attack, but we landed on the Rays, and they have no choice but to invade the best team in baseball. Atlanta is the favorite to win this whole thing, and their best player, Ronald Acuna, Jr. showed everyone why on his very first swing, making this home run look very easy. This is undoubtedly the most dangerous lineup in baseball, and the Rays could not afford to dig themselves a hole, but that's exactly what they did as Marcel Azuna would not be denied on their second dinger of the first inning. Ozzy Albies is one of eight all-star selections on the team, and he picked up his second hit of the day, turning on this fastball to put runners at second and third with a four-run lead. This game was out of hand by the fifth inning, but home run derby champ Randy Arozarena wanted to give his team a dinger before they were eliminated. This absolutely dominant performance assured that Atlanta was the clear favorite and gave them one of the biggest territories on the map in Florida. The Rangers were next up on the big wheel, and just like we had a battle for Florida, only one Texas team will be able to move on to the next round. Corey Seager and the Rangers were off to a great start with this line drive homer off Justin Verlander, and the Astros needed an answer fast as Altuve cleared this leadoff single. However, with zero outs, Alex Bregman hit a grounder of his own, but this time, it became a double play. This brought up Jordan Alvarez with two outs, and the Astros really regretted that double play because all Jordan has to do is make contact with the baseball for it to leave the yard. This rocket off the top wall tied up the game for Houston. The Astros should have been up a run here, but it didn't matter because this home run from Chas McCormick gave them their first lead of the game. Sometimes it only takes one swing to start a rally, and Corey Seager was looking to hit his second home run of the game, but would happily take a double off the wall. Despite these big plays, Texas failed to answer 
Walter in the third, stranding Seager in scoring position. Then, just like the Astros stole the AL West from them, they were looking to steal this game from the Rangers, and Jose Altuve put all of his small frame into this no-doubt moonshot. The Astros had scored three unanswered runs and were looking to extend their third inning lead as Alex Bregman got his first hit of the game. Chas McCormick already had one home run on the game, and he was looking for seconds, blasting this one to straightaway center, where it cleared the upper deck. He made that 450-foot shot look easy, and Texas was suddenly down four runs. The Rangers needed five runs in three innings, and hope was looking bleak, but Jonah Heim gave me a speck of hope as he broke his team's scoring drought. Now needing three runs in the ninth, they managed to get one man aboard, but ultimately, Texas's run ended in their very own state. Houston's bats came alive in that game, and they're definitely the best team left in the American League. We were down to eight teams, and with the wheel choosing the Diamondbacks, it looks like they're gonna try to take over the state of Texas. Unfortunately for Arizona, the Astros were fresh off of a big win, and their bats remained hot in the first inning, as Jordan Alvarez hit his second bomb in two games. However, they didn't stop there, as Kyle Tucker immediately responded with a drive of his own to center field. Zach Gallen had no business to continue to leave pitches over the middle, and the Astros were gonna take advantage of this every single time, with an insane three home runs and three at-bats. This seemed like another lopsided Astros win, but Arizona quickly regrouped as Gabriel Moreno hit this one the other way to put a runner at second. However, this would turn into a huge missed opportunity for the D-backs, as the runner decided to test the throw and absolutely did not make it. Then on top of that, they had no answer for Justin Verlander, who was absolutely dealing. Despite this, the Astros hit a huge slump after those home runs, giving Arizona a chance to gain some momentum, and it really looked like their bats were starting to come alive in the fifth inning. However, the team kept making the same mistakes, and poor base running decisions like this one held the team back again. While we're here, just a reminder that I do use auto base running for these videos. It felt like Arizona killed every chance they got, but finally somebody came through and Gabriel Moreno cut this to a two-score game. Houston's offense disappeared as Zach Gallen settled in, and Alex Thomas was able to deliver his second double of the game in the very next inning. A home run could tie it, and while Gurriel Jr. didn't quite get all of this one, he still had the muscle for this beautiful RBI double to the left center gap. Just like that, Arizona was only one run behind. The game had completely turned around, and it was a very intense eighth inning, as Perdomo was looking to tie the game, sending this one way back where it was caught at the warning track. The Astros definitely had the power advantage in their lineup, and it was really affecting Arizona, as they couldn't clear the warning track or even the infield at times. With the tying run aboard, Christian Walker wanted to tie this game up or even take the lead, and while he gave this one a very good drive, it just wasn't deep enough. Gotta give Arizona credit for keeping this one close, but Houston's early home runs were simply too much to recover from, giving the Astros the most territory on the whole map. After watching Houston win two games, the Braves wanted in on the action, continuing their conquest of the South and getting closer to Texas. We were finally getting to see the Milwaukee Brewers play a game, and they were gonna try to invade a whole other country, taking on Toronto. The North is definitely interesting, with Philly, Minnesota, and these two teams, so it was only a matter of time before somebody faced off, and the Brewers started this one off with one of the weirdest doubles I've ever seen. Despite the chaos, Milwaukee ultimately ended the first, stranding Frelick in scoring position. Milwaukee needed some consistency from their bats today, and had another man aboard in the second. From there, Willie Adamas wanted to leave no doubt, turning on this inside pitch and taking his trot around the bases. The Brewers were up 2-0, but there was no reason to get comfortable, as Christian Yelich took Gosman deep to extend this early lead. On the J side, they were being no hit by Brandon Woodruff, who looked completely dominant. Toronto finally broke through Woody, thanks to this Beau Bichette solo shot, but still trailed by two. They needed some momentum, but this had been their best offensive inning of the game, and they continued this two-out rally with another double. Then, I have no idea how this single made it through, but it managed to score a runner. The Brewers avoided additional damage with a strikeout, but Kevin Gosman was in more trouble. He was pulled from the game after putting two runners on, but that wouldn't matter as Josh Donaldson launched a deep fly ball that broke Milwaukee's scoring drought. It was a four-run game, but George Springer was looking to answer, and with one on, he turned on this fastball. This put the Jays back in it, and then the pitcher put this one in the same exact spot, making the same mistake for the same result. Toronto answered all three of the Brewers' runs, then Mark Canna took advantage of a fastball as this line drive traveled all the way to the wall, scoring Telez. That one-run cushion was significant as Varsho whiffed on this fastball, and the Jays were down to their last out. All they could do was hope to keep the game alive as Merrifield singled, but another brutal whiff on the fastball ended Toronto's comeback hopes. Brandon Woodruff and the offense looked very impressive in this one, and we'll have to wait and see how the Brewers fare the rest of the way, as
as they now have the most territory on the map. The Phillies are one team that could eventually challenge Milwaukee up north, and they could face off very soon as they claim New York. With half the teams eliminated, the wheel landed on the Houston Astros, and luckily for them, they're expanding their land to the north instead of taking on the Dodgers or the Braves. The wheel had still not landed on LA or the Twins, but it finally chose the Dodgers, and there was a lot of empty land in the west. Then, to my surprise, the wheel landed on the Dodgers again, and they once again avoided a game by conquering Oregon. I couldn't believe that two teams had gone this long without playing a game, and they were both safe for this round as Philadelphia was invading the Brewers' massive territory. Milwaukee got off to a hot start last game, but this one was scoreless through three. It was clear the Brewers needed a big game from Brandon Woodruff if they wanted to move on, and Woody held his own as the Brewers got two runners on base in the bottom of the third. Zach Wheeler just wanted to get out of this one scoreless, but former MVP Christian Yelich turned on the fastball and watched it carry deep to the foul pole, where it stayed fair. The Brewers suddenly led by three runs, and this was a huge confidence boost as Big Rowdy pulled another fastball for his own no-doubter. Brandon Woodruff stayed dominant, striking out another Philly, and this play alone made the Brewers my favorite team left in the race as Sal Frelick cleared the diving center fielder's head for what would have been an easy stand-up triple. However, just as the relay throw came in, he decided to race to home plate, going for the Little League home run. He was thrown out, but that was absolutely awesome. Down to their last out, Bryce Harper kept his team from getting shut out in an otherwise dominant performance from Brandon Woodruff and the Brewers. They claimed Philadelphia's land, which meant that they were closer to the Braves than ever. Down to five teams, the wheel finally landed on Minnesota, and West was the only direction to avoid Milwaukee. Sure enough, though, the Twins lucked out, claiming North Dakota. While the Tigers could survive at least another round, the Dodgers were getting closer to Houston after taking Utah. However, LA had gotten lucky for far too long, and they were finally playing a game. The winner of this game would immediately have the most territory on the map, and Jose Altuve got straight back to business with a leadoff dinger. I was wondering how a lefty would affect Houston's offense in this one, but they just continued to look more dominant in the first inning. The top of the lineup destroyed Clayton Kershaw and got out to a 3-0 lead. However, unlike teams like Arizona, Los Angeles had the firepower to strike right back, and J.D. Martinez pulled this double into right center field to get his team on the board. Jason Hayward was up to bat and would have tied the game if I swung just a bit later, but thankfully, James Altman finished the job on his very next at-bat with a quick single. It was a one-run game, and the Dodgers were looking to keep their momentum going, but Alex Bregman made a completely ridiculous play at third base to end the inning. These felt like the only teams that could take down Atlanta, but only one could survive this round, and the Astros' bats were starting to heat up again. Martinez got the Dodgers on the board to begin this inning, and he came through once again with another double that one-hopped the fence. They needed to score him with two outs, but Verlander elevated the fastball to end the inning. Down two, the Dodgers were looking for a big play, and Will Smith came through, driving this one high and deep to left, but it didn't quite make it to the wall. We had already seen some crazy stuff in this battle royale, but Martin Maldonado delivering the dagger with this no-doubt home run off of a righty is probably the most unbelievable. With that, another 100-win team has been eliminated, and the Astros conquered almost all of the West. We were down to our final four teams, and the Twins still hadn't played a game. They had a 75% chance of playing the Brewers, but they continued to luck out. However, this wheel wanted to keep testing the odds, landing on Minnesota again, and I was certain this would end their good luck, but the arrows somehow keep sending them away from the other teams. We spun the wheel again, and it just barely landed on the Twins. The Astros and the Brewers are literally sandwiching them. They absolutely had to invade one of them, but no, the arrows still had other ideas. This was getting ridiculous, and I wish I was kidding when I said that the wheel landed on Minnesota for the fourth time in a row. There was literally only one direction the arrow could send them without playing a game. It is literally nearly impossible to have this good of luck, but of course, the Magic Arrow continues to be a Minnesota fan, and the entire West is completely full. The Twins would have to play a game if the wheel landed on them for a fifth time, but of course, it missed them by just a sliver. Instead, the Braves are invading Milwaukee, who is playing their third game of the video, while the Twins are on their way to buy a lottery ticket. The Brewers are definitely the underdog in this one, so I can't lie and say that I'm definitely rooting for them. Spencer Strider was ahead in the count, but let this one get away from him to put two on. Milwaukee could not afford to make mistakes in this one, so it was definitely a letdown to see them strand runners in scoring position. Atlanta's offense could easily take the Brewers out of this game, and they were slowly starting to break through Woodruff as a Michael Harris single and a walk loaded the bases. With zero outs, all they needed was a sacrifice fly to get on the board. They were lucky to get out of this inning only down one, 
and even luckier that Mark Canna got a slider to belt out of the stadium, tying this game back up in one swing. That was a huge mistake from Spencer Strider, and the Brewers offense has lived for those moments in this video. Power can definitely do wonders for your offense, and I was grateful to have Matt Olson in the lineup because he turned a late swing on a fastball into an opposite field shot to the upper deck. I seriously doubted that this one would make it out, but he has 99 power for a reason. This home run felt like a huge turning point in the game as Acuna got aboard with a single, followed by another from Ozzy Albies to get two aboard. Woody had held his own on the mound up to this point, but gave up three hits in a row, including an Austin Riley home run to give the Braves a four-run lead. This one barely cleared the fence, and it felt like the end of the Brewers' run. However, it was wrong to count them out, and Mark Canna continued to scorch extra base hits in this video. However, Milwaukee still needed to score three more runs, and it looked like this one had a chance to get down, but Atlanta had too much speed in their outfield. The Brewers needed to get to the top of the order to capitalize, and Frelick secured his second hit of the game. Contreras was up next, and this very slow grounder and the speed of Sal Frelick ultimately avoided a disastrous double play, so Yelich was up with zero outs, and he decided to tie this one up with one swing, turning on the inside pitch and completely destroying the Braves' four-run lead in just a couple of innings. Atlanta had no chance but to pull Spencer Strider, but this clearly didn't make any difference as Willie Adamas sent the very next pitch all the way to the moon for back-to-back -back home runs. Milwaukee scored five unanswered runs and took the lead in the sixth, but this rally was not over. They were going to try to extend their lead even more, and Josh Donaldson delivered in the clutch to make this a two-run game. Then, Donaldson delivered in the clutch to make this a two-run game, and it was a good thing he did because Austin Riley was up to bat, and he already had one home run today and earned his second on this deep blast to center field. However, if the Braves wanted to come back, they needed to face all-star closer Devin Williams, and Ronald Acuna Jr. is exactly who you want at the plate in this situation. Two outs in the bottom of the ninth, and Acuna swings through a screwball. Then, Williams caught me chasing the elevated fastball. We had to stay disciplined, taking a low one, but Williams came right back to the inside, just clipping the plate as Acuna looked at strike three. That was a great pitch that would have been very difficult to turn on, and it ended up eliminating the Braves from the battle royale. I didn't see that coming, but that's the beauty of imperialism, as Milwaukee's empire had grown far bigger than I ever could have imagined. The Twins had made it this far without playing a single game, so it was finally time for that to end, as they were set to invade Houston. I still couldn't believe how much they lucked out, as the Astros and the Brewers each had to play several games. But Jose Altuve wasn't going to hold back, driving another leadoff extra base hit that went off the wall. However, the Astros were facing off against all-star Pablo Lopez, and he wasn't going to make this as easy as Clayton Kershaw did. It was the second inning, and Chas McCormick managed to make good contact for a double to the gap, but Jose Abreu couldn't score him, and the game remained tied into the third. The Twins' offense was looking to find a spark against Justin Verlander, but Alex Bregman continued to make absolutely ridiculous throws from the hot corner. It was very encouraging to see Minnesota put up a fight after not playing in a single game, but it felt like they couldn't get anything to drop. We were still tied at zero in the fifth inning, and Michael Brantley made solid contact to hit the Astros' third double of the game, but this could only make a difference if his teammates scored him, which they failed to do yet again. This was the closest game we had seen, but Ryan Jeffers finally broke the silence in the seventh inning, launching this no-doubter to left field and scoring the first run for either side. The Astros' offense had been dominant throughout the whole video, but Minnesota held them to zero runs and were just two more innings away from eliminating them. Unfortunately for Minnesota, there was still time, and this Twins lead was very short-lived, following a Jeremy Pena line drive to the same spot as Jeffers. Each pitcher made a mistake, but the Astros took the lead off of this two-run shot. This game had completely changed in half an inning, and Minnesota could lose a heartbreaker. The Twins were not ready to give up, however, as Jorge Polanco got two aboard with a single. However, this team simply lacked the bats that Houston had as Kyle Farmer popped up, and the Twins were finally eliminated. I couldn't help root for Minnesota in this one, but the Astros had to play a lot of games to get here, and definitely deserved to face off against the Brewers in the final round. This was not the result I expected, but both of these teams definitely surprised me. The Brewers were aggressive early, going for a double steal, and they got really lucky it paid off. From there, Mark Canna continued to be clutch, clearing the bases, and getting Milwaukee on the board. However, as we have learned, you cannot give Jordan Alvarez anything to hit as he tied this game right back up with one swing. He was then followed by Chaz McCormick, as this Astros lineup is truly terrifying. The Brewers' offense was producing, but definitely needed to start clearing the fence if they wanted to keep up with the 
Astros as Big Rowdy was left stranded at second. Thankfully, William Contreras wanted to take matters into his own hands, turning on this pitch and sending it deep over the wall. As a Mariners fan, I could admit that I was really rooting for the Brewers here. Milwaukee had regained the momentum and Adamas reached on a liner off of Justin Verlander's foot. Then Mark Canna went right back to work, launching his second double of the game, carrying this team on his back. Down one, Houston was looking for a big play from the top of their order and Bregman took advantage of a pitch that Woodruff left right down the middle to tie this one up again. This game was off to a crazy start with eight combined runs in two innings and Michael Brantley's double would continue Houston's rally and give them their second lead of the game. Houston could have extended this lead even more, but Bryce Trang's defense really saved them on this play. However, the Brewers offense stalled and that was the perfect cue for Jordan Alvarez to launch his second nuke of the game and it could not have come at a better time with two runners aboard. By this point, unfortunately, the Brewers had used up all of their comeback magic and the Houston Astros reigned victorious as the last team standing in MLB playoff imperialism. Leave a like and comment what you thought of this video and be sure to check out these other ones if you enjoyed.